Okay, good afternoon and welcome to this Jax Facts webinar training session. I want to thank you all for being here today. We do appreciate that you took the time out of your busy schedule to join us. My name is Doug Cook. I'm the publisher of Jax Facts Travel Marketing, and today we have a great program about exotic Abu Dhabi for you. Our first presenter is going to be Melanie Germano of the Abu Dhabi Tourism and Cultural Authority. She will give a presentation on the destination of Abu Dhabi. She will be followed by Keith Powell, who is a well-known travel industry speaker, who will be presenting on behalf of TWC Tours, and will be discussing TWC's various tour package offerings to Abu Dhabi for your clients. After the presentation, there will be time for questions, so please send us any that you may have in the area provided. Alternatively, you're welcome to contact any of the presenters or myself directly with any comments or questions you may have about today's session. Our respective emails are there on your screen. Also, just a reminder that we will have a drawing for two great giveaways after today's presentation. Abu Dhabi Tourism and Cultural Authority will be giving a $50 American Express gift card, and TWC Tours will be giving a five-night stay in Abu Dhabi. So please remain with us for the entire session to be eligible to win. And now for what you've all joined us for, let me turn things over to Melanie for an overview of the destination of Abu Dhabi. Thanks, Doug. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Melanie Germano, and I'm the PR and brand director for the U.S. Office of the Abu Dhabi Tourism and Culture Authority. Thank you again for joining us today, and uh, we hope you're excited to learn a little bit more about Abu Dhabi. I'm not sure how familiar everyone is with the UAE, or Abu Dhabi in particular, but just 50 years ago, Abu Dhabi was a small village made up of nomadic tribes that worked in pearl diving, fishing, and date palm cultivation. That was, of course, until the discovery of oil in the 1950s. Now Abu Dhabi, which is the largest of the seven emirates that make up the UAE, is home to world-class business and leisure facilities and offers luxurious hotels and spas, designer golf courses, stylish boutiques, and much more. Abu Dhabi is located on the Arabian Peninsula near Saudi Arabia and Oman and is a quick 90-minute drive from Dubai. It's the capital and largest emirate, making up 80% of the landmass of the UAE, and Abu Dhabi also has more than 200 natural islands, which most people don't realize. There are three main areas that make up Abu Dhabi, the city, the desert, and the oasis, and we'll walk through each of these regions, and uh, we're going to get started with Al Ain. Al Ain, which is about a 45-minute drive from the city of Abu Dhabi, is known as the oasis city and is a perfect day trip from Abu Dhabi city. It was once a vital oasis on the caravan route to Oman, but today it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is considered the Emirates cultural heartland. Al Ain is the birthplace of the Al Nayan royal family and offers a look into Abu Dhabi's history through restored forts, tours of ancient burial grounds, and new museums. In addition to the forts and museums, visitors can check out a working camel market or visit a local date farm. Making up two-thirds of the emirate, Al Garbia is known as the western region of Abu Dhabi. Visitors can enjoy everything from giant sand dunes to the pristine beaches of Sirbani Yas Island, as well as check out Liwa, which is a historic oasis town that sits at the entry to the Empty Quarter, which is the world's largest sand desert. Al Garbia offers a variety of activities, such as off-road driving, camel trekking, falconry, dune bashing, and more. And we recommend that travelers to Al Garbia stay in the five-star Qasr al Sarad Resort. Qasr is a virtuoso property. It's a little over two hours from Abu Dhabi City. It's been written up in publications such as Condé Nast Traveler and Travel and Leisure, and it's truly authentic and feels like something out of Arabian Nights. And as you can see from these pictures, it's a pretty amazing, amazing resort. And finally, the third region of the Emirate is the city of Abu Dhabi. In the capital, visitors will find luxury hotels, 
towering skyscrapers, innovative restaurants, museums, souks, and of course the ever-present Emirati hospitality. Travelers can check out the architecture, walk along the corniche, go shopping, relax at the beach, go scuba diving, or check out one of the major annual events, such as the Qasr al Sun Festival, which is a festival that takes place every year to celebrate the UAE's history and culture. There's also Abu Dhabi Art, the Formula One, which is the last in the series, which is kind of fun, or the Abu Dhabi Food Festival. And any visit to Abu Dhabi must include a tour of the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque. It's one of the largest mosques in the world. It has 82 domes, it's made of pure white marble, and it has the world's largest hand-knotted carpet. But my personal favorite thing about the mosque is that it has a unique lighting system that was designed to reflect the phases of the moon. So each day the lighting is a little different from the next. So as the moon progresses through its cycle and becomes full, the lighting of the mosque becomes more brilliant. Again, it's a must-see and absolutely gorgeous. Another must-do is the Abu Dhabi Falcon Hospital. Uh, the Abu Dhabi Falcon Hospital is a working hospital where guests can see surgeries, you can interact with falcons, learn more about the Emirates history with falconry, and a lot more. And as mentioned earlier, pearling was an important part of Abu Dhabi's history. And as a guided, a guided tour is provided by Abu Dhabi Pearl Journey, it's a great way to learn a little bit more about this history and uh, the importance of pearling in uh, Abu Dhabi. Visitors can also check out Yaz Island. Uh, Yaz is a quick 25-minute drive from Abu Dhabi City, and it's known as Abu Dhabi's adrenaline hotspot. It's home to Yaz Marina Circuit, the Formula One, Ferrari World, Yaz Water World, and Yaz Links Golf Course. It's also the future home of a Warner Brothers theme park and hotel, which is set to open in 2018. In addition, it was just announced in late June that Yaz Island will be adding SkyTran transportation, which are these little two-person vehicles that are computer controlled and will connect destinations across the island and eventually it will connect Yaz Island to Abu Dhabi International Airport. As you can imagine, we're pretty excited about SkyTran as it will make getting around Abu Dhabi and Yaz Island a lot easier. Located just minutes from downtown Abu Dhabi, Sadiat Island is the country's cultural hub and will soon be home to the world's largest single concentration of premier cultural institutions, including the Louvre Abu Dhabi, Guggenheim Abu Dhabi, Zayed National Museum, a Performing Arts Center, Maritime Museum, and much more. The island also boasts stunning beaches, premier golf courses, and luxury hotels. Here's a glimpse of Louvre Abu Dhabi, which was designed by Jean Nouvel. Construction as we speak is in its final stages and then the building will enter the preparation phase, which includes testing, art installation, and development of the visitor experience. We anticipate the museum will welcome visitors in early 2017 and hope to have an official opening date soon. Next, we have the Zayed National Museum, which is a partnership with the British Museum and designed by Lord Norman Foster. We're super excited about this museum. It's designed in the shape of falcon wings and will tell the story of the unification of the UAE, the history of the region, and its cultural connections across the world. And then we have uh, Guggenheim Abu Dhabi. Guggenheim is designed by Frank Gehry and it will be dedicated to contemporary, contemporary art and culture. And finally, here's just a rendering of the vision for the island. You can see the cylinders of the Guggenheim. To the right of that is the Dome of the Louvre, and to the right of that is uh, the Maritime Museum. Abu Dhabi is constantly increasing its hotel offerings and currently has more than 30,000 rooms available throughout the Emirates. Many well-known brands have built in Abu Dhabi, including the Four Seasons, which just opened in May as well as two St. Regis properties, a Ritz-Carlton, Sofitel, Shangri-La, and many more. 
future hotel openings include another Fairmont, a Grand Hyatt, an addition hotel, and a Jumeirah property on Sadiat Island. And here is a picture of the St. Regis that's on Sadiat. This is Emirates Palace, which is definitely a must-do. They have an amazing Emirati restaurant called Mezlai. You can also just go there and enjoy their set signature gold cappuccino, um, which has gold dusted on top, or their camel chino, which is made with camel milk. This is the Ritz-Carlton, which is across from the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque, so it offers absolutely stunning views of the mosque, and it's just a beautiful hotel. This is Zaya Nura Island, which can only be accessed by boat. This is the Eastern Mangroves property and uh, the Fairmont. So travel to Abu Dhabi. Uh, the best time to travel is from November to April. I've been to Abu Dhabi during the summer. It's doable, but as you can imagine, it's very, very hot. Abu Dhabi is safe. The Economist released its 2015 Safe Cities Index, and it named Abu Dhabi as the safest destination in the Middle East and Africa region. It's also the safe, uh, the 25 or the 25th, excuse me, safest city in the world. Finally, as a female, especially, I receive a lot of questions um, on dress. So I've never personally had any issue with dress code. The only time you need to cover up is when you go to the mosque. And at other times, we just suggest that visitors are respectful and avoid wearing really skimpy clothing in public places. So as long as you do that, you're good to go. Getting to Abu Dhabi has never been easier. Etihad Airways is the national airline of the UAE, and it offers direct flights to Abu Dhabi from six destinations across the US, including Chicago, Dallas, Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco, and DC. In addition, just last November, Etihad launched its new A380 service for guests traveling from New York, which is super exciting for us because the A380 features the residence. Uh, the residence is Etihad's private three-room suite in the sky. It has a sitting area, a bedroom, and a bathroom, and it's actually probably bigger than my apartment here in New York, so it's pretty amazing. Uh, the best thing about flying directly to Abu Dhabi is that U.S. and Canadian passport holders receive a free of charge entry visa upon arrival. Uh, and then you go through customs on the way back, and it's like a domestic flight when you get back home. So it's particularly great after a 13-hour flight from New York uh, or a 16-hour flight from L.A. So. That wraps it up for the quick overview of Abu Dhabi. Thank you again, and uh, please let us know of any questions, and I'll turn it back over to Doug. Excellent. Thank you, Melanie. Great presentation. Now let me turn things over to Keith Powell to tell you a little bit about TWC Tours and their offerings. I want to... I want to welcome everyone to this part, which is on TWC and their tours. I want to introduce myself first. I am Keith Powell, known as the Business Revivalist. I always open uh, any program I do with a quote that has a lot to do with what we're going to be learning today. And my quote for this part of the program is, success is in the details. And details is what TWC is all about. So I want to start with a little bit of a discussion about what is a destination management company? And I don't have too many slides for you today, but this particular one, I want to frame around what is a destination management company and why do I need to use one as a travel advisor, travel agent? Well, first off, a destination management company is a resource for you, the professional travel advisor. It's assisting you and your clients in the destination. It's your local support in that location. They are part of your travel management team. And it's a one-stop resource for you and your clients, and that makes your travel planning a whole lot easier. Who is TWC? TWC is your local on-the-ground representative for tours, and I'll get into more details on that because there are several other areas that are also supported 
by TWC Destination Management. They have a local headquarter in uh, New York, so you have a local contact to be connected with, and that's really, really important. Financially stable, tons of quality control, and a commitment to you and your clients. And that's key today. And as I opened with the quote, it's the details that are going to make the difference and make you shine with your clients. And that's what TWC is all about. They're a company that has a team of very qualified staff in the region, and that's there to support all of the efforts and the planning that you do. But they step in and help with that on the ground in the local region. One stop, and I'm going to get into some details on that because they have a range of services that are going to support you and provide your client that exceptional and very unique experience in Abu Dhabi. And then you can see the list of all the different memberships and accreditations that they have, and they're basically well-versed and well-supported with the professional organizations that they're part of. Now, what they offer, and this is absolutely essential for you as the travel advisor. By the way, I like to call all of you out there travel advisors today rather than travel agents. You're much more than what we think of or have known in the past as the traditional travel agent. So as the travel advisor, people come to you for your expertise and what you're going to be able to provide them in their travel destination and experience overall. So the first thing to know is that TWC is the expert in the region of Abu Dhabi. And that is absolutely essential for you and your clients. So you're dealing with someone that has all of the background and the knowledge to be able to support your clients when they're on the ground. They know the ins and outs of the area. And that's one of those little areas we talk about success being in the details, is when your clients come back and they not only saw the big major maybe tourist things that everybody wants to see when they go to a region that's exciting as this. And by the way, I learned tons from you on your presentation there. This is just a super, super exciting region. And it's exciting for several standpoints. One is that your clients want to go there. Many, many well-traveled clients that have not been to this particular area in Abu Dhabi, they want to go there. So having someone that can give them all those little nuances in that area is absolutely a critical element of you shining as the travel advisor. The other aspect is that while they do have tours, and I'll talk a little more about some of those tours in detail in just a second, and escorted tours as well, they also offer an additional range of services. And I want to pull out for a second, which is the FIT. And we might have some travel advisors that are relatively new. FIT stands for Foreign Independent Travel. And what that means is that someone wants to go there on their own and not be part of an escorted or a led tour. But here's the interesting part when we deal with a destination management company like TWC, is while your client can be independent, they are not alone in the foreign location. And that's particularly relevant today with a lot of people's uh, safety uh, issues and concerns that they may have just in general when they travel. So they can feel confident in going into a region because they've been given all of the details and also the contact information with local contacts when they're in that particular foreign destination. And it's the little things that make the difference in the detail. And when you're planning FIT, nothing can be more important than being able to offer them all those little tiny extras and the little nuances that many of the maybe major package tour companies do not offer them and strictly simply give them the overview of the high points. So that's a real key element for you to focus on. And then when you come to tours, obviously escorted and led, but they have all of the other support factors that are there. Also, you'll note that they have weddings, and destination weddings being a huge, huge area, honeymoons, the whole romance area. I don't know, looking at some of those pictures, I don't think you could really skip over the romance part too easily out there on the uh, beautiful sand dunes with the camels. And I saw some pictures earlier with uh, even picnic baskets out there on the sand dunes and, and the lighting of the mosque, for example. Just very, very romantic and intriguing. And that's really what this area is all about is the intrigue. But with that, 
you've got to have somebody that can support your efforts as you advise your clients when they go there for such things as a wedding or a honeymoon or one of those romantic getaways. And I don't know where details play a bigger role than when someone is, quote, tying the knot and doing a destination wedding, then all of the little tiny things, the little things do matter when you're doing a wedding or a honeymoon. So that's where uh, TWC can come in and really assist you. And then, of course, you also have the VIP. I'll go into a little bit more of that in just a second. But they have the VIP options for you for clients that are used to a higher level of service, concierge service, and even we we're talking here about the aircraft and the uh, private accommodations on board. That's for this type of client. And that is also a part of what you get with the uh, destination management representation of TWC. Also assistance with the requirements for uh, visas. And it is a great uh, thing to have that kind of seamless entry from major uh, US uh, destinations and also that return of doing uh, pre-customs without having to clear in New York. That's an exciting aspect, any of you, and I'm sure many of you had the other experience when the end of the trip and you're still having to deal with all the lines and the uh, different uh, hassles that come up clearing customs sometimes. For those of you that have clients, and this is a, a really important aspect, that like and can afford that additional experience, I don't want to gloss over lightly that VIP concierge type treatment. I've had that in a number of destinations uh, when I travel, and I can tell you that makes the world of difference. You arrive in a seamless and smooth manner. Uh, they can even provide you with the option of um, a private jet. Um, and special cultural events as well. And all of those things are those extras for that upscale, very, very VIP type client. And the other thing I'd like to mention overall, and this is what's going to help you shine as the travel advisor, is that TWC and Abu Dhabi Tourism, they're very responsive to you. And that's important. Because oftentimes when we need an answer or we have a question that comes from our client, we have to be able to send that off to somebody else and then wait for a response. And this is a very, very important detail that you're getting responsiveness and fast turnaround. And then there's a range, as you can see, of options, a wide range of different types of programs that TWC can assist you with and help your clients. And one that I'm not going to feature each one of these, you can read these on the screen, but I want to start with one that I think sometimes we miss, is that you can do a nice stopover in Abu Dhabi. Particularly people that have come into the region for another destination in there, and it's a very long uh, flight over, and hopefully you can get either a non-stop or a few stop uh, type uh, from some of the uh, many gateways that are available. But one of the things is that you can add that They've gone the distance. They're all the way over there. And adding a few days, here's a, a three-day uh, stopover that's featured from $280. You'll also notice there are family packages. And it's kind of interesting because sometimes we don't think of that region as being very necessarily family-friendly or family-focused, maybe is a better word, of uh, utilizing that area for a family getaway, a family destination. And they certainly have wonderful programs. And the uh, desert sand dunes and camels and other activities. And you heard of many of the new things that are coming into play that uh, younger members of the family would certainly enjoy. And then, of course, you've got all of the standard kind of options that you would expect in that area. But you're in a unique environment. So the standard now is much more elevated. So you're looking at panoramic seaplane flights over that area and all kinds of special things that either an FIT person can do or one of your romantic getaway clients or for groups. Now, I do want to mention for a second, too, is that if you come across a client, or maybe that's a part of your focus in your travel business, is the corporate and meeting and incentive. And this region is very, very exciting for them. A lot of companies want to hold meetings in that particular part of the world. So you can work with them 
and have the resources on the ground for all of their special needs. And there again, my opening quote talking about success being in the details. Sometimes we think of, uh, the, and I want to use the word, kind of standard travel where everything is sort of booked and we may do it out of a brochure. More and more today, the people that are very successful travel advisors in their business know that it's not what is pre-packaged, but what I add into that particular unique experience that's really going to make that client go wow and provide them with all of the things that they truly need, not something that necessarily is just kind of a pre-packaged agenda. And that's never more true than when we deal with corporate meetings and incentives. And incentives, remember, those are always the top business people. A lot of it is sales, but can be some other areas as well in a, a company's environment. And so you are dealing with the company's absolute top, best, highest achievers. So with that, you have to keep in mind that in most cases, they can buy the great, normal, first class, premium kind of air travel and premium accommodations. So you have to step above. And that's where TWC can come in and provide you with those unique cultural experiences, those special kind of venues for the group or the incentive uh, members that are there, if it's a true just incentives, and all of that hand-holding VIPs. And I always like to emphasize when we deal with incentive clients, they are VIPs, period. And then, of course, you have uh, Etihad uh, Business and uh, First Class, as well as Economy. And I'll just put a side note in here. This is your job. When we look at the aircraft there and Etihad Airways, we have to know our clients. That's your job as the professional travel advisor to say, I know my clients that are economy. Nothing wrong with that. And again, that might be some of the more family-oriented type programs or maybe someone who likes to take a lot of multiple trips during the year and, and has a, a little tighter budget for each one of those. So they use the economy. Uh, in terms of the uh, flight service, but you have business, you have first class, and then of course the more uh, VIP accommodations on uh, this uh, new flight uh, schedule. So those are very, very important elements for you to understand when you're profiling your clients is to find out what it is they really want in terms of their transportation to and from the region. And then of course help you with the visas and documentations uh, for that. Some more tours there. Um, I mentioned a few of the things. Helicopter tours are always a great thing. And of course, the beautiful sites that are wonderful and spectacular from the ground or from the water side, but become even more unique or breathtaking when you're able to see them possibly from a helicopter or from some other uh, vantage point, uh, private yacht again. Uh, those type of experience for VIP clients are super great. And then again, I mentioned honeymoons. And if you look in the lower left corner there, you'll see the fabulous setting. I mean, that particular photo just screams romance. See, your job as a professional travel advisor is to sell this. You are to paint this picture for those people that have never been to the region. They may go online. They may see some videos. They may see some uh, photos. But your job is to enhance all that. Now, I've got to stop there take a quick pause, and I want to say, wow. What's the wow? The wow is in the center there of your screen, the lower center. It is 20% commission. 20% commission. That is a wow. Oftentimes in your business, we're looking at smaller commissions unless we do something to increase those. So wonderful packaged land programs are offered at a 20% commission. And here's another key. If you are a producer, and that means that you've made TWC and Abu Dhabi uh, region a preferred vendor with you, and you are going to support them with your business, and they are going to support you and help you grow your business, and they have a, an additional uh, override if they are a preferred vendor with you and a volume, reducer, a volume producer. Excuse me. The other thing I want to mention is also net rates. And net rates are another area that uh, can certainly help your clients. Um, net rates uh, allow you the opportunity to price your
product to your clients in a different fashion. Now, net rates are not for all agents, but here's where net agents are particularly helpful to you, the travel advisor, for groups, for weddings, and for corporate clients. And that's where usually you'll look at some kind of a net rate structure, which allows you to add your own markup and to work with your clients in more of a volume kind of packaging. And again, fast turnaround I mentioned, commissions are paid weekly. And here we have a beautiful picture of Betty Hod uh, Airways and uh, showing you uh, some of their accommodations. Doesn't that picture on the uh, left of your screen there just look super inviting? Uh, that's certainly the way I'd like to travel all the way over there and have the great food service, in-flight service, friendly and very responsive service to your clients when they're in route on the airplane. Lots and lots of major gateways. Look at the number of service destinations and the number of countries that are serviced around the globe. And what that means for you is that you have a greater likelihood in a major gateway city that they service to be able to get the great, easy, comprehensive service to the destination. So here are the partners, and Abu Dhabi uh, Tourism, and as you heard, uh, just a wonderful program, uh, not only just wonderful information on there, and of course, uh, Etihad uh, Airways as well. Here is the uh, contact information, and I want to encourage you, if you're just even in the process of thinking about putting together a group, going out and marketing maybe a destination wedding, maybe you're going to talk to a business group, or maybe you already have a book of business with uh, FIT, Foreign Independent Travelers, that you want to approach and offer this destination to them. I want you to reach out to uh, Saeed, and he will be there to help you. Here's the different ways that you can contact him, and he'll help you market and put together the right information for your clients. This is an exciting region. Abu Dhabi is the kind of things that almost fairy tales and legends are made of. And people have this on their wish list of wanting to go there. And more so today than ever, people are looking for something different than the same old, same old in travel. What they want is the unique experience, but with all the quality and all the details taken care of. And that's what TWC and TWC Tours can offer your clients. So thank you very much for attending today's program, and uh, we'll all be open for uh, questions. Excellent Doug? presentation. Thank you, Keith, very much. Uh, Melanie, I'm going to bring you back on the line, too. We do have some questions. Keith, actually, you answered a number of the questions that we have, but I will review them. Um, actually, a good first question is, uh, it's asked, I speak to some companies who tell me they are a DMC, and they also tell me they are a tour operator. Is there a difference? Keith, is that something there, you can address? There, there can, yes, there can be. Uh, some uh, destination management companies do not run their own tours. And in this case, uh, TWC does have the capability of uh, doing tours or connecting you up with local based tour companies that may be more challenging for you to not only locate but be able to communicate with because of the distance. So that's where a destination management company like TWC can come in and pull that all together for you. They are really part of your team. So there are some out there just in general destination management companies that do not offer uh, tours. They do other aspects on the ground where TWC offers you kind of the full package program. Excellent. Thank you. Um, you already answered this question. It, they asked if uh, TWC is able to handle corporate incentive groups. And yep. that was something you had Absolutely. mentioned in your presentation. Mm -hmm. um, somebody asked for the TWC contact, which is there on the screen right now. Um, there's another question, a couple questions regarding air. One question was whether there was commission paid on air. And the other question is if they have consolidator air rates. Well, I'll, I'll take the consolidated air rate. Normally, what you're looking at is the net uh, operation. That's where they offer the uh, net, and I think we can have that back up on the screen there. But there is the net rates um, available. And um, 
actually, you may want to send him, uh, say, a, a question on that further, and he can get back to some of the more details on that, on the specifics on the commission structure. Perfect. Uh, Melanie, there's a question here for you. The question is, um, when is the best time to travel to Abu Dhabi? They say that they have a group going in March, March 12th to 19th of 2017. Is that a good time to be traveling there? That's a great time. And we suggest November to April, but even you know, end of September, October to April, late May is, is good. So I just wouldn't suggest going like now. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um, somebody's asking if they need to apply to TWC as an agent's partner to be able to continue to receive assistance and benefit from TWC, and if they do need to register, how to go about doing that. Yes, that you can contact uh, right there is all the information. Go ahead and, and uh, open up the, uh, the door with them and tell them that you're interested, and then they'll be able to tell you uh, what the requirements are to be at the second level for a preferred vendor and receive some uh, additional uh, compensation there as well, and then to begin working with them. So I don't think it's any more than a normal uh, process that you would do with opening up the uh, communication and say, I want to book you, and um, they probably just verify that you are a professional travel advisor and go from there. Great. Um, I think we know the answer to this. Will TWC assist in making a custom package for a group? Yes, that obviously is a, uh, that might have come in earlier before I shared that, but that is one of the key elements of the destination management services of TWC is that they provide you that uniqueness, that customization. And remember today for your clients, they are looking for uniqueness. Customization is absolutely essential to closing the sale and not only closing the sale once, but keeping a customer happy. It's all those things that they couldn't do on their own or could not get and receive or find easily on their own. And remember today with the internet, we can find a lot of information, but it's pulling that all together and it's connecting it up so that the client gets to the destination and has everything done seamlessly. And that's what uh, TWC is all about. Perfect. Uh, Melanie, another question for you. And I think you may have, may have gone over this. How far is Dubai from Abu Dhabi? It's about a 90-minute drive. So the roads are great. It's super easy. You can get a cab or you can uh, hire car service. It's, it's great. It's not bad at all. Great. Okay, bear with me as I look through here a little more. Somebody's asking... If clients can visit there without flying, I'm not quite sure where they're getting at with that question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not sure oh. about that. I guess if you're in <laughs> Dubai, you can drive to Abu Dhabi. I know yeah, there are cruises. Um, <laughs> other than that, um, Keith, I don't know if you know the, the answer to this. They're asking if TWC provides FAM trips. Yes, they, uh, they have uh, different times that they will uh, work with you, and uh, there are some FAMs that, uh, to the region, and some of them may be in conjunction with other um, suppliers as well. But just to contact them, there's the information again on the screen, and let them know that you're interested on a, uh, a FAM trip, and I'm sure they'll uh, talk with you, and, and when they have an opening or one that they're planning, they'll be in touch with you. Great. Um, a couple of people have asked if a copy of this webinar will be available. Uh, the answer is yes, it will be available at www.jaxfax.com. That will be up in just a few days. We will be sending you a link to that once it comes up. Um, let me see. Uh, Doug, I have a question for you. Sure. Um, also, all, all of the questions that you got, you're going to send those over to um, each of the presenters so that they can um, respond to them. Um, sure. And follow up. I can okay. do that. Not a problem. I'm sure. I'm sure Saeed would like that so that he can follow up with some of those directly. Absolutely, not a problem. Um, another question for TWC: Is it only Abu Dhabi tours they do, or do they do other locations? 
they do have some capability of doing other um, uh, parts of the region. So um, absolutely, this is their main uh, their main focus. And uh, but because of they're in that particular region, they have to be able to work with uh, some of the other regions as well. And sure. uh, Dubai, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely great. Uh, Melanie, somebody's asking if you know what the currency conversion rate is. Uh, yes, the, cur the currency in Abu Dhabi is the Durham, and the last time I checked, it was like uh, $1 to 3 and a half Durhams, approximately. Thank you. Okay, apparently, let's see. Somebody's mentioning that there is a TWC fam trip in September, which I'm sure Said can answer that better if people want to contact him directly. Right. Um, right. Melanie, if you go over again what the low and high seasons are. Uh, yes, uh, November. Uh, the best time to travel to Abu Dhabi, what we typically suggest, is November, December, January, February, March, April. Um, Etihad flights are pretty expensive during the summer, as that's a high travel season as a, as, uh, for flights to India with stopovers in Abu Dhabi. Um, but usually we don't have people visiting during the summer unless they're doing a brief stopover. So November to April um, is definitely the best time to go. Excellent. And I think you briefly touched on this, but somebody's asking where they can find dress code requirements, I'm assuming for women. In sure. Um, you can go to visit AbuDhabi.ae, and there's some information on our website. You can also feel free to shoot us an email. Um, I've traveled over there many times, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions or uh, go through on an individual basis any concerns. Perfect. And I think that wraps up all of our questions. Good. Doug, I'd just like to say to the agents that are on today, one of the, and, and many of you that know me and some that don't, I obviously do a lot to help and train and, and promote uh, the agent education. The way that you can you know, best thank our suppliers today is to book them, contact them, and you won't be disappointed. Your clients will just absolutely have one of those exceptional experiences in this exciting uh, destination of Abu Dhabi. And so I encourage you to reach out. And not only will it be good for your clients, but it will be good for you in terms of the bonus uh, uh, higher commission structure, as well as a destination that your clients will come back to and say, wow, this was an experience of a lifetime. And that's what you want as a travel advisor. That's a great point. Thank you for bringing that up, Keith. Great. Well, I think this will wrap up the webinar. I want to thank TWC Tours and Abu Dhabi Tourism, Keith and Melanie, for participating today. I do want to remind people that we will be doing the prize drawing immediately following this webinar, and we'll be sending out an email shortly to congratulate the winners. Again, thank you all for attending, and have a great day. Thank you, Doug. Thanks, guys.